Welcome everybody to the 2020 Mini Cooper S that has been provided to me for a couple days by Mini Calgary. Many thanks have to go off to them to make this video possible. Now I've been fortunate enough to test out the Mini as the convertible model, the Countryman model, but I haven't experienced the true Cooper, the original concept of what a Mini is. So that's what we're going to be doing today, breaking down this Cooper S model and hopefully sharing everything that I think you need to know about this car. Now we're going to place it in my ranking system against other hatchbacks but also other performance vehicles as well as this is the S model. So let's find out at the end where it lies in my ranking system against its competition. So there haven't been any major revisions for the 2020 model year. The Cooper came out of this generation in 2014 and in 2018 they had a few light updates. The headlights and the tail lights are very different some more standard technology and available technology throughout the Cooper range. But the most noticeable difference was the transmissions available with the Cooper lineup. So you still have a choice through all the three models, the Cooper, Cooper S and the John Cooper Works version, if you want three pedal or two pedal driving. The three pedal six speed manual is no different throughout those three cars. And then when it comes to the JCW, it keeps its six-speed automatic transmission. But the Cooper and the Cooper S get a new seven-speed dual-clutch transmission. You'll be able to tell that it's new because you've got a new shifter style and how things are laid out here in this boot. And we'll talk about that in a little bit because there's a fair amount that I think needs to be addressed about this dual-clutch seven-speed transmission. But let's get some of the basics out of the way. The Mini Cooper is now a three door or a five door or two or four door, depending where in the world you're watching this and how you believe a car should be classified. The five door version adds another $1,300 onto the Cooper. And of course it's trying to maximize the rear seat space and the use of them as much as possible. The JCW is still only available with the three door version and the engines are different for each model. For the entry-level Cooper, it's a 1.5 litre with 134 horsepower. This 2-litre twin-scroll turbocharged engine I have in the Cooper S is 189 horsepower and 221 pound-feet of torque. It has a fair amount of poke to it. The sounds that come out of the exhaust, though, is a bit odd. There isn't really a good noise it isn't musical it isn't beautiful i've come across a lot more four cylinder engines that have a sound to them they have a characteristic noise but with this mini cooper s the prominent noise and really the only thing i'm able to talk about is the sound of the turbo you'll have a lot of whistling when it's spooling up a lot of fluttering when it's disengaging and blowing off all of that exhaust and it sounds good but comparing to other four-cylinder performance cars i've come across they the engine and the exhaust they actually sound like something here not so much of course we have to say that this mini cooper feels like a lot of the other Mini Cooper products, very tightly bound steering that's heavy but not too heavy where it's difficult to drive. The brakes are strong, visibility is excellent, and from sitting where I'm sitting, the car feels very planted to the road. It feels like a train on its train tracks. You're never going to really worry about this car strafing within the lane. And highway driving as well, this is something I'd really like to know. For a small car like this, on a windy day, you'll notice that it gets beaten up by the wind a lot. You're constantly readjusting the steering. But with this, perhaps because the steering is so heavily weighted, if you are correcting on the highway, it's very minute, very smooth movements with the steering wheel. And it certainly rides firm, but the car is forgiving enough that it never feels brittle or hard. Here's a bump, kind of a divot I just went through, and you can feel that strain on the car's actual components. I can hear a few things rattling about, not because I think the build quality is poor, but I just think because 
everything is so compact in this vehicle any difference to the road surfaces not only is transmitted through the ride quality but the rest of the mini as well i don't mind it at all for such a small vehicle it really does feel like it has its place on the road and it is transmitting and communicating everything that it is feeling to you the cooper s has three different driving modes green mid and sport for the green mode when you go with the automatic transmission the dual clutch transmission you'll have a coasting mode between certain speeds i think it's uh, above 50 kilometers so if you're ever on an off ramp or you're going down a hill the engine and the transmission will disengage so you're reducing the parasitic losses and trying to make the engine and the overall driving experience more efficient sport mode i don't think makes the steering any heavier but it certainly makes the exhaust louder and the response from the throttle sharper but some of the things that annoy me with this seven speed dual clutch transmission is that for a sporty car for a performance car we don't have paddle shifters behind the steering wheel we have to resort to sliding the shifter over to the left of which you'll engage sport or manual mode and you'll change gears by pushing up for down and down for up I really would like to see paddle shifters here whether it is that it works well or not I think anybody looking for a performance car is expecting paddle shifters these days also with this transmission where a lot of dual clutches will suffer from slow crawling in town you know stop and go city traffic I haven't experienced any issues whatsoever when it comes to this transmission so much so that I had to double check and make sure this is a dual clutch transmission because to me and I think anybody else getting behind the wheel it's going to feel like any other normal automatic transmission so that kind of wraps up everything pertaining to the driving experience other things living with the mini I love how everything's put together it still has its genuine personality and a character that you can't find in I think any other car on sale today for the front row space I'm six foot four I feel like I've got enough space to move about my legs and my upper body and so on headroom is certainly tight especially with this side sun visor that I have in my way I just can feel my hair brushing up against it slightly storage space is kind of low couple cup holders up front this center armrest that is your center console doesn't offer up a lot of room and second row is definitely reserved for children really it's just to show off that you have four seats putting any adult back there for any period of time isn't going to be good trunk space is okay definitely enough to carry two carry-on suitcases if you remove that security cover folding down those seats you'll see that they split in a 60 40 configuration despite there only being two seats back there oh well it doesn't really make a blind bit of difference at the end of the day but you can fold those down flat but there is quite a hump in between the boot floor and the back of the lowered seats so overall this mini is living up to exactly what i think a mini should fun to drive fun to be in and it has enough of the performance to warrant an s badge but comparing to so many other performance cars i've been in recently it just isn't offering enough to me to say it's a downright competitor to the veloster m a car that i'm madly in love with or the gti or focus or fiesta st that kind of a thing so that wraps up all of my thoughts regarding the 2020 mini cooper s i haven't left this car in any way disappointed getting behind the wheel of these minis you hope for a few things you hope they've all got character and personality and that they all feel quite unique in the current car market and this car certainly does another thing when i get into any of these vehicles is that it doesn't ever feel like i'm cramped inside and I think that's really saying something for a, a brand such as Mini. But comparing it against the other hot hatchbacks or just regular hatchbacks on sale today, there's a lot of technology that is absent here in this car. And I think you can find a lot more refined vehicles 
for significantly less money. That's why I think in both aspects of a performance car and as a hatchback, you should test drive the Mini Cooper S. It's fun, it's cute, and it has a lot of quirks to it, but it's far from the most competitive car in its segment. So that's been all of my thoughts regarding this car. Thanks again for watching. And if you want to like the video or share it to other people that you think would like it to, that would mean a lot to me. Again, lots of thanks. I have to go off to Mini Calgary that lent this car off to me for a couple of days so I can review it. All of their information is just down below and you'll see the subscribe button down there too. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that, that would be absolutely marvelous. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you again soon.